Have you ever thought about using your heart rate as a means of enhancing your training? Hi and welcome to the Aegis Runner. I'm Ralph. Today we're going to talk about maximum heart rate and heart rate zones. Knowing which zone our heart rate is in can enhance and improve our training. For example, we don't want to train too hard. We don't want to get overtraining. Having too high of a heart rate can lead to overtraining. But if we're not getting our heart rate up high enough, we're not improving our cardiovascular health. So knowing our max heart rate and knowing the most effective zone to be in can help improve our overall training. Now, of course, to do this, you need some kind of a heart rate monitor. I have a smart watch. I have a Galaxy watch. Uh, there's lots of watches that will do that, just measure the heart rate. Of course, there are chest straps. So if you're interested in doing this, you're going to need to get some kind of a heart rate monitor. They're out there. Some of them are fairly inexpensive, but uh, go find one you like, whether it's on your wrist or on your chest. Uh, some I've seen some that are on a finger. So whatever works best for you, get a heart rate monitor. Now all these training zones I'm going to talk about, and there's five of them, though we'll try and simplify that towards the end, are all based on your maximum heart rate. What is maximum heart rate? Well, it's kind of an age-related number that says this is the most your heart can beat when you're doing heavy activity. And as I said earlier, it's basically age-related. You probably have heard the classic equation, which is 220 minus your age. So if you're a 60-year-old individual, 220 minus 60 is 160. So that formula would say that your maximum heart rate is 160. Now there's lots of other formulas out there and some people think that formula is really not good for older runners. Uh, a better formula is called the Tanaka formula, which is better for people who are 40 or over. And the Tanaka formula is also age-based, but it's a little different math. Tanaka says take your age and take 70% of it and then subtract that number from 208. So for my 60-year-old runner, 60 times 0.7 is 42. 208 minus 42 is 166. So the Tanaka formula would say a 60-year-old individual would have a max heart rate of 166 compared to the classic formula of 160. Now one thing you got to keep in mind, some of these calculated formulas are based on statistics and it's not one size fits all to think every 60-year-old in the world has a max heart rate of 166 or 160 is silly. Uh, but it is a good number to use if you have no other data. Now, you can get other data. How, how can you do that? You can do your own experiment. You can do some interval work. Go out and warm up, run for two minutes really hard, then take maybe a two-minute rest, walk for two minutes, then run another two minutes, take a two-minute rest, and then do a third run at two minutes as hard as you can and see what your maximum heart rate is during that third run. That's probably your maximum heart rate, and that's probably a better value to use than some formula. But in lieu of doing that, use a formula. So I've done the field test myself as a comparison to the Tanaka equation. And in the field test of running those intervals, I get a max heart rate of about two to three beats per minute higher than the Tanaka equation. So the equation is pretty good, but I would encourage you to try your own test just to get uh, your max heart rate, maybe a little closer to your physiology and your genetics. So we're gonna talk about five zones, and these five zones have different benefits uh, in your training program. Each zone is kind of separated by roughly 10% uh, of your maximum heart rate. For example, zone one is 50 to 60% of your maximum heart rate, going all the way up to zone five, which is 90 to 100%. So zone one is the lowest intensity. That's 50 to 60% of your maximum heart rate. That's a very easy, easy run. You, you could talk, have a conversation during this pace. This, this zone is really great for recovery. If you've done a hard run or maybe just ran a marathon or a half marathon and you want to do some recovery runs a couple days later, that's a good zone to be in. That still allows your body to rest and is not working your heart or your body too hard. Going up a level to zone two is 60 to 70 percent. This is considered a, a really good level if you're doing long training runs. This is considered an aerobic threshold level. We, we, what do we mean by aerobic threshold? It means this is kind of an effort that you can sustain for long periods of time. You can still maybe hold a conversation, but it's kind of a, a, an effort that seems not effortless to you, but you can really go long distances with this. So this zone two feels comfortable for extended periods of time. So target a 60 to 7% heart rate for your long training runs. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, maybe scroll down a little bit and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate that. That helps my channel. 
Now the next zone is considered the aerobic zone. That's zone three, and that is 70, 80% of your maximum heart rate. This is where you want to be. If you're trying to view your cardiovascular fitness, you want to get in that aerobic zone, but you're not going to run for, you know, 10 miles in the aerobic zone. You're just not going to be able to do that. When you're in that aerobic zone, you can maybe talk some, but it's going to be more like in fragments uh, and not, not long full sentences, but that's where you build up your cardiovascular health. So get in zone three, which is that 70 to 80% when you want to work on your cardiovascular aerobic fitness. So zone four is 80 to 90% of your maximum heart rate, and that's considered anaerobic state. What does that mean? It means your body's producing so much lactic acid that you can't, you can't process it. You're not getting enough oxygen in to process that lactic acid. But that's kind of good. Too much lactic acid is what causes fatigue. So training in that zone will help reduce how quickly you become fatigued when you're running. So that's a good zone to be in, but again, it's gonna be shorter runs. I kind of did a run in that zone the other day. I did three miles. It was kind of at a faster pace for me. It was a little harder to run for me, but I got into that anaerobic zone. And that's a good thing to do as part of your training regimen. Now, the last zone is zone five. That's the hardest. That's 90 to 100% of your maximum heart rate. You're going to do that on very short intervals, maybe doing fart licks or you're doing intervals or you're running up hills, but that's for short bursts of time. You're not going to run for any extended time at that max heart rate. But again, it's good to do hills. It's good to do those intervals. That's what helps build up your speed, helps build up uh, your endurance and just build up your muscles. So again, that's part of your training program. So all five of those zones, zones one through five, can all be part of your training program from recovery runs to extended long runs to aerobic runs to tempo runs to short bursts and, and intervals. So you can incorporate all those in your training regimen to improve your overall training and performance. So five zones seems kind of complex. I think you can combine those down to maybe three. Looking at zones one and two is kind of the uh, primary uh, training area where you're trying to either do recovery runs, easy runs, or long extended runs, keeping yourself in that 50 to 70% uh, maximum heart rate range. And then you can look at that kind of that cardiovascular aerobic range, which is more in the 70 to 80 to 85 percent, improving your overall cardiovascular fit, fitness, maybe improving VO2 max a little bit. And then the third range would be the harder range, which would be maybe something over 85 percent, whether they'd be tempo runs or short intervals or hill work to improve overall conditioning and, and fatigue resistance. So all these zones are well and good, but how does that work in with run, walk, run? Well, there's not a straightforward answer for that. I haven't really come in to any research to say, well, here's how you deal with that with run, walk, run. And the reason I bring it up is when you walk, that's going to lower your heart rate for some period of time. And I think that's okay. I think the way you approach this is when you're running, what state do you want to be in? If you want to be in an aerobic state that uh, 60 to 70, I'm sorry, that 70 to 80% range, then go out and run 70 to 80%, recognizing when you walk, you're going to drop down for a little bit. And then when you run back again, you get back up into that 70 to 80% range. I would think you'd want to make your run intervals long enough so that you get into the range you want and stay there for you know most of that, that interval. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily run harder uh, in my run interval, recognizing that my walk interval is going to drop, but I wouldn't necessarily do that. I think that's going to result in quicker fatigue. But so kind of keep that in mind that your walking is going to reduce it overall, uh, but I would not necessarily push my run intervals. So if you have any experience training with heart rate zones, I appreciate your feedback down in the comment section. Uh, one kind of last word is all these heart rate zones are not lines drawn in concrete. In other words, just because you go above 70%, doesn't mean you're you're in now in the aerobic zone. Those are kind of fluid, just like people are fluid and we're all different. Different fitness level, different physiologies. Kind of like max heart rate. One number does not fit every 60 year old. So keep that in mind as you start to do uh, heart monitoring. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe icon. And if you did like the video, please hit that like icon. I really appreciate that. Thanks again for watching and happy running.